the KBase SDK is a set of tools for developing KBase apps. And the first thing that you need to do in order to create your own KBase app is to install the dependencies. So let's go ahead and click on installing the KBase dependencies, the KBase SDK dependencies, and let's see what we got. We need um, either Mac or Linux because it doesn't necessarily run the best in Windows. We don't need Java because we're going to be doing a Docker based installation. I'm going to need Xcode because I'm on a Mac. You need Git. And we finally, we need Docker. So if you're a Mac developer, the first thing you're going to do is go to this link, developer.apple.com slash Xcode, and download the Xcode tools. The next thing you'll need to have is Git. You can install it at this link. And lastly, you're going to need Docker. And there's Docker installation instructions for Mac and Linux available here at these links. So I already have all those. But you can go ahead and pause the video and get those installed before we continue. Otherwise, I'm going to go on to step two, installing the KBase SDK with Docker. So the advantage of installing the KBase SDK with the Docker is that you don't actually need any dependencies. All the dependencies are inside the Docker container. We'll scroll down to this section, install SDK with Docker. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to pull the KBase SDK image. So Docker. All right. I already have the latest image on my machine, but this will take some time on your machine to pull down the, the KBase SDK image. So feel free to pause the video at this point. Otherwise, we're going to go on and we're going to now we're going to add the KB SDK executable to our path. The first thing that we need to do for that is to make a directory for the executable to go to. So I like to put it in a directory called bin in my home directory. So you would do something like this. And I already have that directory. Once you've created a directory for where you want to put the KB SDK, you'll run the following command, docker run kbase slash KB SDK gen script. We're going to output this to the, our directory and call it KB SDK. Perfect. Now we need to change the permissions on it. chmod755. Perfect, just change the permissions. Now the last thing is we want to add this executable to our path. You can either edit your .profile, .bashrc file and add it there, or you can run it temporarily like so, export path equals path home bin. And now the KBSDK has been added to our path. And now I can check that out by doing which KBSDK. So now I can do KBSDK help. And it's working, perfect. Now the next step that we need to do is download the SDK based Docker image. This is the Docker image that we've pre-compiled for you. We have various runtimes, bioinformatics tools, other libraries, KBase specific tools and libraries. You won't need to worry about setting up your own Docker image if you use ours. So in order to do that, you run KB SDK, SDK base. And I already have it on my machine. Here it is, kbase slash kbase SDK base 2, and it's the latest version. And this will take some time on your machine, so feel free to pause the video. Now that your kbase SDK and the Docker image environment have been installed, we'll go on to the last step in this video, create the module. So today we're, we're just going to create an example module called contig filters which filters contigs in an assembly file. 
So if we scroll down to the Create Module section, we'll see that there are some various options. There's KB, SDK, Initialize, Dash EV, for example, application, dash L for the language, dash U for the username, and then the module name. What I'm going to go ahead and do, and you should do this as well, is we're going to initialize a new app. So KB SDK init, dash E for example. We don't need to choose Python because it's already in Python. And we're going to do dash U, and this is where you type in your KBase username. And then we're going to name the app our username, contig, filter, and then whatever you want to call it. So done. The module was auto-generated. So what I have to do next is change it to this directory, then I can make it, and then I can test it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the new module. Here it is. This was just generated. So there's a lot of different things that have been generated. The things that you will most often be looking at will be your Docker file, which here is the uh, SDK base 2 image I was talking about earlier. We're using it for this example app. Our kbase.yaml file, which has the name of the application. You can see we did that in the beginning, and here it is. It's also important to know about the spec file. And the spec file contains everything about your application, its inputs and outputs. We won't need to edit this, or don't need to go too deeply in, into it in this video, but it's good to know that it exists. And then the next step that we need to do is we need to rename the application. So we'll go to UI, go to narrative, we'll go to methods, and we'll go to this display.yaml file. So right now it's called filter contigs. Let's call it filter. Let's remove this space and put your username. And now the next step we need to do is we want to test this this uh, module. So in order to do that, we have to change into the directory. Then we need to run make. So now I can't actually test it until I have a developer token. So in order to get the developer token, I'll go to the KBase website, appdev.kbase.us. I'll go to my account. I'll go to developer tokens. And I'll create a demo token. So this is my token. Don't use it. Don't try to use it. It will be deleted at the end of this video. And keep this token in a safe space. And you can't get this token again, so make sure you keep it somewhere where you can get it again. So I'm going to go to my app and I'm going to go into the test local test.cfg file. And here is a place to put the token. Perfect. So now the token is here and now our app will be able to talk to the KBase server. So now we can go ahead and actually start testing the app by running KB SDK test. So now we're running through all the tests. So I have faith that this is going to complete successfully. So let's go ahead and move on to how do we get this example module onto the KBase website. Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to create a new GitHub repository. If you go to github.com slash new, we'll see the create new repository page quickly open up a new tab and so we're going to call 
our repository, whatever we like. I will call it contig filter demo repo. All right. I'll go ahead and create this repo. And now there's instructions here on how to initialize the repo and add everything into it. So I'm inside the contig filter application demo file folder and I'm going to run git init. So now I've initialized the empty git repository and I will do a git add star. And this adds everything in my directory to GitHub. And you'll see that there is a warning that says the test local is ignored by your git ignore file. And that's great. That means our token is not being uploaded to GitHub. Now that I've added everything in this directory, I can do my first commit. All right. Then I need to add a remote origin, which is this git repo URL. And lastly, I can do a git push or origin master. And it's done pushing and I will refresh it. And here we go. There is my contig filter app, a K-base module generated by the K-base SDK. So now that we've up to, uploaded it to GitHub, we can go ahead and copy the URL of this repo. And we'll go back to KBase, we'll go to the catalog, and then we're gonna add a new module. We'll put in the GitHub URL, and we'll hit register. Now what's going on is the registration has begun and KBase is pulling the repo. Then Docker is building the instructions in a Docker build and it's compiling and the catalog has now successfully registered this application. You can see all the information about what happened inside this scroll box. So now we've successfully registered this application and the last thing that we need to do is actually run it. So let's go to the dashboard. Let's create a new narrative. And then let's let's find our app. So if we recall from earlier, I named my app filter contigs bsadkin2. So I can go search for the app in this app section. The first thing I want to do is hit this toggle and toggle between the release beta and dev versions to get to the dev versions. Now I can go click search. I can type the name of my app and it's over here in the uncategorized section. Here it is. And I've just added it. Let me collapse the cell. And here we go. It's the app that we just generated. This right here is being created by whatever's defined in this spec.json file. So the last step in this video is we're gonna go ahead and actually run this. And in order to do that, we need an assembly. And to do that, we'll add the data from the example section. And we'll go down to an example assembly, add it. I can see it in the dropdown. And then I will filter contigs with a minimum length of 2000 base pairs.